Good day, folks. I just want to show you a setup since a lot of you like the power cell here, such as the sugar cell here, which I just use sugar, which works very well as the um, dielectric here. And what I have here is essentially a setup that uses these various cells that I've made here. And we're able to step it up to like hundreds of volts. A lot of people are having a hard time because of the high Z setup and how these cells have like one milliamp or less to give the pure potential. So essentially I figured out a crude setup that works. I've talked about this before. So basically here's the magic of it all was it started off with this um, very, very small clock, you know, just a regular wall clock. I took it apart. As you see, this is basically a motor. It's a step, you know, and it, and it, and it drives this. I took it out now with this gear in the middle for the seconds, right? It's a very small coil, obviously high Z. And what's interesting in the clock module is it pulses over 10 volts when one volt. So it already steps it all up and gives you a cap dump internally in the chip. So I figured take the module apart and this might be good for others to, to find out, right? It's like Bedini, it's a one shot, but it's a free trigger that requires almost hardly any um, current to operate. So they will nicely operate off these power cells here. So essentially I was having an issue with the output of the wave being shorted out. So I used a capacitor here on the output. It also makes it reactive. So it helps us keep the, the current away. And my high Z, cause it expects a high Z like the motor, we took that out. So I just used this coil here and a cross configuration looping into itself in series into the primary of a high voltage transformer here. 3.5 K and on the outside here on the secondary, which would be the high voltage. I've got my probes here and under the load right now, we're getting an output of at least 20 volts. And what I'm doing is I'm self looping it. People always want to see a self looping setup, right? So here it is right here, self looping back into the cell and I've got the meter here. I'm going to show you the meter, how the, the voltage never goes down in this capacitor, which is basically an electret. So we're going to, so here it is. If anything, it eventually goes up a little bit because I'm, um, there's basically there's no way it can go down in this setup. It's a very efficient feedback. It's self looping itself. It's not draining. And instead of I'm just for the configuration, because everyone wants to see a self-sustaining that doesn't actually drain itself, that's actually self-looped, right? So this is like the first thing everyone wants to see in these demonstrations. But essentially what you want to do is instead of self-looping it, like I always say, you use it to run your actual load, charge a bigger capacitor or battery or something, which we can do. I've done various capacitors, which is very nice because if we don't load it here, which I'm going to show you because we're just feeding it back. So this is the feedback winding here going through the rectifier. I have a full bridge rect full wave because what happens is what's very nice is this gives you a nice like every second, you know, a nice pulse, right? But when you send that spike through these transformers here, like I've shown in other videos, the transformer gives you back like a sine wave. So you get a plus and a minus wave. So to not, because it essentially, you know, it, it captures the inductive kickback part of it because it's, it's a pulse, right? So I don't want to waste that. So the full, you know, the four diodes is what helps capture both sides of the wave to not waste it on the high voltage side, but I have it loaded. So I'm going to disconnect the feedback from the cell. I'm going to show you on the scope, how all of a sudden, see, I disconnected it that those spikes, you know, are very high now. So again, without the load of the cell itself, now I plugged it back into the self looping, it gets to over a hundred volts. So we can charge devices at over hundred. And this is just another cell here I have. So this is the same idea here. And they all work by the way. So my idea was I wanted to use this as a cap dump, right? To control a transistor, which you can, by the way, to, to pulse one into the other. But I found out I was strong enough because this basically has its own all in the chip, kind of like a cap dump. It, it adds a delay in every second and gives you a nice pulse. 
So, um, yes, it's a slow process, but it is an oscillator and it is internally running at a much higher frequency thanks to the crystal here. So uh, there is a continuous oscillation running at high frequency, which then creates this pulse here, which is supposed to control the motor, but I'm cleverly using it to capture what would otherwise not be usable. So this, of course, in, in theory, could basically run, I guess, for like 300 years without having to recharge it or anything. So it's just a demonstration. And I mean, I've been playing with this one. This is just cardboard on top here. And uh, there's like literally zero corrosion, nothing at all. So this is candy, you know, sugar. I melted sugar on low temperature on the stove and when it was a syrup, I melted it and let it harden as an electrode. Holds about close to one volt and acts as a capacitor. I measured it, it, it's in the low PF. It was very difficult because of the potential rate. So I had to put another capacitor in series and account that with Ohm's law and all that to, to figure out crudely what the capacitance was. So interestingly enough, a few PFs. So this is just gonna go on forever and ever and ever here. And of course, here's our voltage on this cell here. And um, yeah, it's not gonna go down even though it's driving the whole thing, especially with the feedback. It's gonna keep itself going continuously. But again, in a lot of these demonstrations, folks, I find that the self-looping is uh, sometimes unpractical, but people want to see it, right? So um, just don't mind all my wires underneath. They're all disconnected. I should take this out of there. There we go. So here it is. I mean, it's still a nice spike under the load of the cell, right? We're getting like 20 volts peaked volts peak to peak so plus negative combined so a half of that under the load because it's acting as a load right because we're charging it high z though well see it'll eventually keep going up 1.154 now because we're kicking it in the ass essentially pardon the expression with well over 20 volts on this side because it's very high voltage. As I said, without the load of the cell, it's hundreds of volts. So of course it can only react to that. So as we've been talking here for seven minutes, the electret is pumping itself. There you go. And I mean, it's not scope energy. Let's, let's disconnect the scope completely disconnected the scope and we're not doing a sun and drop here or anything everything is still running we just don't see it right now but everything is still running and it will keep running by the way no tricks i just want to show you folks that there's no tricks as people in my past videos were like oh it's coming from the scope the wave is this and then and then okay whatever no scope And it's not draining and technically the meter loads it even though it's high z itself there's still a tiny draw from the meter so plus the draw of the meter and it's not going down something's going on right So those little um, clock modules could do a lot if you know what to do with it. Dollar store, literally big wall clock, <laughs> really big for nothing. Once you take that little square apart, there's not much left in there. It's basically a little pulse width modulator, crystal controlled. Literally what it is, micro voltage, micro amperage, which is exactly what we need for our triggers. Here I was trying to get myself headaches trying to build these transistorized MOSFET switches and all that, that does that about a pulse a second. Why reinvent the wheel, right? 
dollar store dollar store works well so i just want to keep talking to show you that there's no drain here because i oh i disconnected the scope so but it's pretty obvious from the pulse you see it's coming from the, the time you know the second needle it's an output square wave But yeah, this is not 10 minutes now and we're going up in voltage and I even have the scale right so you can really see, you know, not just 1.1, see the 1.154. So you'd see the fast drop if there be a fast drop. There's no fast drop, just a slow but continuous climb. Eventually this would reach 1.155 and keep itself pumping by the way we're using pure potential and we're using feedback non-linear modes keeping the dipole open with high z loops only sipping the field when not collapsing the dipole every time we pulse it through this setup here then we feedback it into the capacitor, we build up our potential well, which is our pressure. And this is how you literally build up gains without breaking any laws of physics whatsoever. Of course, at this scale and demonstration, it's not commercial quality power, of course, but it's still the point that this thing would run for like 300 years. You don't have to do anything. But obviously, this will probably corrode up in the air by like 100. But the point is, you know, depending where you live on Earth, I guess, if you're in dry climate or, or, or near the sea, jungle, which would be very humid. 12 minutes of me talking here. 11.54 not going down so maybe i should reconnect now and show you that we still have that's just my meter timing out we still have our pulse but now i could just move my wire here when i I didn't even have it soldered. I just had it touching there. So apologies for that as I reconnected the scope. I'm just going to have it back on there. I'm going to hold it with my hand. But there you go. We are back. I'm going to try and see if I can keep. There we go. I'm going to keep it stable here. There we go. Yeah, sorry about that. So yeah, here we are, 13 minutes in, I gotta re, turn this back on. Everything with um, power save mode, right? This thing takes forever to turn on. Come on. It's set to field detect. It's got a field detector in this thing. Nice little meter. Detects fields. Um, infrared sensor. Very nice. As you see, 1.154 here. And we're back up and running. We always were, just we weren't having the monitor. Just a little glitch here as I put the scope back on. I, I rub the wire off but we're back so at some point i probably want to solder this because it's working very well i'm just doing the demonstration here but yeah this will not this will not drain it will just go up 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 so i hope you enjoy and again you know it can be as simple as candy let it dry it'll condition itself
So I hope you enjoy just some inspiration. The big takeaway here is for all your like cap dumpings and triggers for your micro cells and your electrodes and all that, a clock, just one of those dollar store analog clocks, take it apart, use the built-in pulse width modulator that would drive the coil. This thing here. This circuit board was in here, by the way. I just ripped it out carefully. So yeah, you could see that under the load, if this runs for like six months on a 1.5 volt battery, it'll run this trigger like no problem. And again, doing very well here. It's not gonna go down. I know that. And again, like I said, wasting it by looping it. Maybe we should be charging you know, with the higher potential, big capacitors, and then dumping that into things. But, you know, you start off with one stage and then gradually build up from there with what you have, right? So this could be used to trigger something else that's bigger, right? This could be used to trigger a bigger transistor and then a bigger tank from something else. But you gotta start somewhere with something that's reliable that doesn't depend on wind, on sun, on the amount of heat, and, and la-di-da, right? So you want something that no matter what operates, no matter where you are. And this is the start of that. So I hope you enjoy and have yourselves all a great day.